Hi everyone, Rose from Minerva here and welcome to this video. Now for today's video we will be looking at three adaptable unisex patterns and their fabric pairings. We have the Folkwear Kimono, the Simplicity 8845 and the Merchant at Mills Thalma Boiler Suit. So we're looking at a few different options on how to adapt these patterns by using different materials or different techniques and we'll start with the Folkwear Kimono. What I love about the folkwear patterns, they bring uh, historical garments into uh, modern patterns. So they're perfect for anyone who does like sewing more historically correct garments or maybe vintage style garments. And of course the kimono is no exception to that. It's probably one of the most recognisable Japanese patterns that there are and it's a completely versatile pattern. It's an unlined and multi-sized pattern and you'll see that the, the pattern construction itself is actually all cut in one go. So the back and the front is cut in one long uh, pattern piece. The sleeves are obviously cut and they come in two different, uh, two different styles. So you've got the male so uh, style sleeve and the female style sleeve. Um, the female style sleeve is actually two different styles in itself. So there's an informal sleeve style and a formal sleeve style. It has a neckband that uh, continues below the waist and that is triple in four, so that's three layers of fabric. And it also is quite long, so it's a full length kimono right down to the floor. The first adaption that you will need to do with this uh, pattern will probably be to lengthen it or shorten the kimono and depends on, on what length you would like. Of course, you could uh, add a belt to this as an adaption. You could either make a belt in the same material or a um, complementary material. Traditionally, that would be like an obi belt, and that's that wide belt that comes and ties around. If you were using like a skinny belt, I think that would work pretty well for like materials that are flowy or drapey because it will add that in, it will it would bring it in, it will create a gather. That would look quite nice in, in, the, in the floating material. You could also use maybe a, um, a faux leather belt or a leather belt uh, for perhaps a stiffer material, shorten the length of the kimono and that would make quite a nice sort of day dress. If you wanted to add, say, an embellishment or embroidery to the kimono, you could use the Sash Eco uh, running stitch. Now, this is a simple running stitch. It's done with like embroidery th thread or a, a cotton, a lightweight cotton crochet thread. And uh, as you can see on the on the illustration or on the pictures, the um, there's a lot of designs you can do with this embroidery. It's you can be as complicated as you like, or you can be as simple as you like. Traditionally, it was done to reuse materials, so um, it would, you could layer up the fabric um, and do the running stitch to create like a jacket that was uh, a lot warmer because it's got several layers of material there, it creates uh, insulation. Um, but it is also quite a nice sort of decorative technique to use on like a kimono, say if you're doing it around the neck band, just on those elements, it would look really, really pretty. fabric we have the kimono paired with is, uh, well it needs no embellishments whatsoever, and it's the Minerva exclusive Vibrant Flowers Viscose fabric. So there we are, we can see why it's called Vibrant Flowers. It's got this amazingly bright print on it, very very bold and dramatic. It has like a black background and then it's got pinks, purples, reds, orange uh, flowers on top with the green leaves and also some little white filler dots in there as well. It's a very floaty, very soft material. It has an amazing drape to it. So if you were going to say put a belt around the kimono, if you make a full length kimono and put a belt around it, this would work really well because it gathers in so nicely um, with that amazing sort of soft floaty drape to it. It's made from 100% viscose and it's a woven non-stretch material. So it's perfect for the kimono. Now I'm a sucker for Sears Sucker, I absolutely love the fabric. It's just a material that needs no other, no other embellishments. It doesn't need a pattern, it doesn't need anything on top. 
it just shows off itself um, just by being a seersucker really. Now this one's made from 50% tensile, 47% organic cotton and 3% elastane. Now that 3% elastane does give it a slight stretch, it has a stretch width of 10% and a stretch length of 15%. So you can just see there's a little amount of stretch there. There we go, nice little bounce to it. This won't really um, matter with the kimono, it's not something that needs a stretch, it's for woven material. But because it doesn't have a large amount of stretch, it won't really, won't really matter. Now the sear sucker itself is um, incredibly, incredibly textured. You'll see on the close up just how beautiful the texture is. And it's created by the um, warp and wefts being uh, woven at different, ten different tensions. Sear sucker is made by a process called slack tension weaving and it's where the different weaves of the fabric are held at different tensions which is what gives it its puckered, puckered effect. Now sear sucker does naturally hold itself away from the body so it's a very breathable airy material to wear and as you can see it's a lot more structurally sound, a lot more crisper, uh, more um, well, less drapey than the viscose that we had. The viscose was a very floaty material, very soft, very uh, delicate but this is a much more robust material. It creates, it will create wonderful um, structural drapes to the kimono. And lastly, on top of my little pile of fabric here, we have the Minerva Core Range 125 GSM soft wash denim fabric. Now it's soft wash, so it has a very softer, much more softer um, feel to it. It's not a jean weight denim, um, so whereas jean weight is like heavyweight, this is very, very light. It's more like what you'd use to make shirts. This I think would work really well for the embroidery technique I mentioned earlier on, the Sashiko running stitch. You could use a light coloured thread with this. It does come in a few other colours, so you could uh, have a look, see what, see what colours you can combine with that or maybe like a really, really bright colours in that run stitch as well, really make a statement out of that, uh, out, of, out of your embroidery designs. It's made from 100% cotton and it looks like a denim. It has that, uh, that twill stretch, it's got like little tiny, tiny white flecks. It's non-stretch and it's a woven material, so it's perfect for this pattern. It's quite a vers versatile fabric, especially with this pattern. You could um, shorten the length of the kimono, make it into a dress or a robe. That would that would look quite nice. Or just keep it full length, you know, um, make it into an evening dress. That would also work really quite well. Linda Ann posted a photo of her make using this pattern uh, on the Minerva community and you can see that she's used like a silky satin type material in like a floral print and she's also made a belt for this pattern as well which is great for, uh, for keeping the rope together. It looks like she's shortened the hem a little bit as well which is which is brilliant you know you, that will probably be the main adjustment that you'll need to make to this pattern it's just to shorten it or lengthen it to whatever length you, you desire. Simplicity 8845 is a denim jacket pattern and as you can see it's a very very classic design. It's more of an intermediate sew so for someone who maybe has a bit more experience with sewing or would really really like a challenge um, I would definitely suggest making a mock-up of this material of this garment first before you uh, fully commit to another material. The adaptions for this pattern will probably mostly be um, focusing on the fabrics that you use so you can use the fabrics in different ways, different materials, but of course it does have top stitching so that's a great thing to practice or a great thing to do in maybe a contrast in thread so you can play around with certain aspects of the denim jacket of well of this pattern so you don't have to use a denim for a denim jacket pattern you could use a cord you could use a wool you could even use a twill um, the pattern itself lends itself to medium to heavyweight materials so you know you could play around with the different uh, different fabrics there you also need thread or maybe a contrasting thread if you are doing the top stitching and you will also need some metal buttons. The first fabric we have is a clan tartan wool coating fabric. 
So it's a fabric that is thick, it's medium to heavyweight. As you can see, it's a very, very nice material. It's made from 70% polyester and 30% wool, and it does have that soft touch feeling of wool. It's non-stretch, it's woven, so there's no stretch in there whatsoever. You'll need a strong thread to sew this with as well. Now the pattern is tartan. I have it here in the black, blue, white, and red stripes. Uh, it's a very typical tartan material. It will be a warm fabric as well. Um, but if you say wanted to make a more heavier jacket uh, that will be a little bit more so towards winter, then I would uh, suggest lining the jacket as well. And you can do that by adapting the pattern. It's a great option to say if you didn't want to make a denim jacket or the jacket out of denim, or you didn't want to adapt any fabric or customize any fabric, but you still wanted a unique, uh, unique coat to wear. Because it's patterned, it doesn't really need a lot else doing to it. If you did put that top stitch in on top, you could pick out, say, the colours of the red or the blue and do the top stitching in those colours. So yeah, it's, it's a brilliant material to use if you like the de denim jacket style, but you didn't necessarily want to do a denim denim jacket. This is a brilliant uh, alternative to, to that fabric. Saying that, denim jacket, it would be wrong to do a, a focus on a denim jacket without a denim to go with it. So here I have the Minerva Core Range 290 GSM soft wash denim fabric. It's more heavier weight or medium weight than the other denim, uh, soft denim fabric we had earlier on for the kimono. It does have a more stronger feel to it, a more structured sort of uh, feel to the fabric. I have it here in like the dark indigo, but it does come in a few other colours and it's, but this is a really nice, deep, deep colour. Of course, if you did do the top stitching on top, um, that would work really well. You know, you could use that typical tan colour or maybe even like a red, a red would go really quite well with this colour. It's made from 100% cotton, it's non-stretch and it's woven. So as you can see, no stretch there. And being a denim, it does, it does fray quite a bit. That could be something that you make use of in the pattern. You know, you could make use of the fact that it does fray, give your jacket a more distressed look. Of course, you can do that with also sand, sandpaper. So um, if you've ever worn distressed jeans, you know the fuzzy feeling it gets once, once the material's worn a little bit. You could wear that away with this material with a little bit of sandpaper or like a nail file. Also, you could get really quite creative or arty with this material. It is a plain coloured material, so if you had like fabric paints, you wanted to paint on the denim jacket, you could also use it for embroidery, sequins, beads, it's strong enough, it will take that. So if you did want to use some of that run stitch that I mentioned earlier on, that would be a good option for this material as well. What I have here is the Minerva Core Range 100% cotton heavy twill fabric. Now this is a very, very sturdy fabric. It's incredibly strong. It's got a lot of structure to it. There's non-stretch and it's woven. I'd even say it's even stronger than the denim that we had earlier on. Now having that twill, it's got that dia diagonal structure to it as well. You can see that on the close-up. Now I chose this fabric because of a make I saw on the Minerva community. And what they've done is they've taken a plain fabric, they've dyed it pink, really nice bright pink, and they've used recycled denim and other, other materials to make a really amazing custom jacket. And as you can see, what they've also done is they've added a contrast panel on the top as well. So they've, had, they've taken inspiration from different TV shows and they've really made themselves a wonderful customised piece. And I just think it shows off how well you can adapt this pattern, you can really let loose your ima imagination with uh, different materials and different ways of creating this pattern. You will need like a white, a white or a very light coloured material in which to dye. So of course this, this is a perfect match for that. It's a very strong sturdy material and it does come in the white. Use cotton thread, not polyester thread, because the cotton thread will take on the dye, whereas the polyester won't. You can look up different dyeing techniques, so you could like the dyed fabric beforehand, or you could tie dye the fabric afterwards. 
even gradient dyes or dip dyes would look really nice so if you're using a white material and say you dipped it in a, a pink or a blue that would create a really nice gradient dye effect for this jacket The next pattern is the Merchant Mills Salma Boiler Suit. A boiler suit really is like the original onesie, so um, it's an all-in-one all in one style. However, it's more sophisticated than, say, um, a onesie that you wear around the home, so less, less cuddly duck, more sort of uh, evening out type of, type of pattern. It can be made in a range of fabrics. You can either use a lightweight material for a more softer look or a heavier material for a more dur durable boiler suit. It's a multi-size pattern, it comes in sizes 6 to 18 and there's a few different things you can do to adapt this pattern. For example, you could shorten the legs and shorten the sleeves. Um, if you shorten the legs, you'd make more of a play suit style uh, garment. Sleeves, of course, you know, you could just simply just shorten them. You could also create turn-ups with those, so you could roll them up and put uh, buttons on to fasten them, that would look quite nice. You can also remove like the zipper at the front and say add buttons on instead. You need to make a button band, so definitely play around with that, that element as well. A more intermediate thing to do would be to say add a channeling around the uh, waist. So um, a, a elasticated channeling that will gather in the material and should really show off your waist. Of course, different materials that you use will create different looks. So a more floaty look, a uh, floaty material will create more of a gentle gathering. A stiffer material will make more harsher drapes and pleats, so it's worth playing around, see, see what you think and see what you like. The first fabric I have this paired with is the Atelier Brunette Twill Viscose Hilma fabric. Now this is a lighter weight, medium, uh, lighter weight fabric than the heavy twill fabric we had before. It's still strong in structure, but it's not as stiff as that other material. It's much more lightweight and flowy, so it makes a really good pairing for this pattern. As you can see, the pattern of the um, fabric is like the sketchy artistic florals. We've got some light pink, salmon pinks going on in there, some burgundy, ochre, some nice dark forest greens and a navy as well so it's got this cream coloured background and those lovely sort of muted coloured flowers on top. It does come in another colour so be sure to check that out as well. It's got a subtle sheen, it's got a nice little shimmer to it, it's not a satin satin um, material but it does have like a little, little way of catching the light and it's a twill structured fabric so you'll be able to see on the close-up that diagonal twill it is incredibly strong, it's going to hold those elements of the um, boiler suit really well. Of course, if you did add that channel as well, it's not going to create a completely soft draped gathered um, waist, waistline, but it will, it will still gather in quite nicely this material. It's woven, made from 100% viscose and it's a non-stretch material, so you'll see there's no stretch there whatsoever. Depending on what you want to use your boiler suit for, um, it does need to be comfortable, it needs to be easy to wear and this material does create a good match because it is a very, it's a lightweight material but it does have, it is opaque, um, but it does have a very loose sort of floaty feel to it. The next fabric is the two-tone stripe tensile fabric. This is made from 100% tensile, also again it's a woven non-stretch material, there's no stretch there at all. I have it in black but it does come in a few other colours so be sure to check them out because there is quite a nice range of colours on there. So the two-tone is the stripes as you can see, um, one slightly darker, one slightly lighter and also, I'm not sure whether you're about to see on the video but there is a slightly more shiny appearance to one of to one of the stripes than the other. It's a twill fabric, so again, it's, it's very strong. It's perfect for the boiler suits. I think it does have a little bit more drape and flow to it than the Atelier Brunette fabric. 
it's a bit more silky feeling, feeling um, and it does flow really well. Again, if you were to put a belt around this, that would that would gather in really quite nicely. Being in the black, it's it's very it's more sophisticated. It would create a stunning pared down boiler suit. The last fabric that we have for this uh, pattern and this video is the Minerva Core cool Range Cotton Waffle Fabric. So with my love of Sia Sucker, I had to choose a textured fabric and here this is a waffle fabric. So it's similar really to a Sia Sucker in the fact that it is a textured, textured material, um, but this is much more uniform, this is a much more uniform uh, texture than, than the Sia Sucker we had earlier. Of course it's larger as well, the texture is much larger. I'd say they're probably seven to eight mils in um, in square size. It's called waffle because obviously it looks like a waffle. If you've uh, if you've eaten waffles before, you know what the waffle looks like. It's made from 100% co cotton. It's a medium weight fabric, and again, it's non-stretch and woven. It's going to create a completely different boiler suit to the two twill fabrics we had earlier on. So whereas they were floaty and drapey, they had little shimmer to it, this is much more matte in appearance, it's much stronger, it, the strength of it, you can see the, the, the folds that this creates and how strong and structured this material is. So if you were doing things like the turn-ups, like I mentioned for an adaption on this pattern, that would work super well with this. Um, if you put a button on it as well, just to fasten them on, this is a, it's a good option and a good pairing for this pattern. I have it here in like this dull amethyst colour, which is a really nice muted colour. It does come in other colours on the Minerva website, so do sh check them out. Let's take a quick look at the boiler suit that uh, Linz has made, and she's used the Merchant Milk Salma pattern. She's used like a strong um, khaki coloured material and it, it's made a very relaxed looking uh, boiler suit. Looks incredibly comfortable to wear. We've reached the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And we've had our three adaptable unisex patterns. We've had the Folkwear Kimono, the Simplicity 8845 and the Merchant Mills Thalma Boiler Suits and we've also had a range of fabrics to go with them. All fabrics and patterns mentioned in this video you will find in the description box and if you have any comments or questions please do put them in the comment section. The Minerva community is a wonderfully supportive network of creators, crafters and sewers who post what they do, they post their own makes and they also post their own tips and tricks. So when you do join the Minerva community with your free account, you can also post your own mates. And if you've used any of the patterns or fabrics in this video, do tag me in them because I would absolutely love to see what you do. So that's it, we've reached the end. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.